Hey guys, Professor AAA here from Not For Everyone. I wanted to talk a little bit about what the world might look, look like in 20 years. 20 years doesn't seem like too far off, but with the technological advancements that's going on and with the rate in which the world is changing, 20 years is gonna be a very, very long time. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is data. So data this, data that, in God we trust, all others must bring data. So there's a lot of discussion around data and what we're going to do with this data, privacy issues, uh, but data in itself uh, is not a bad thing. Uh, it's actually quite a good thing. Uh, data looks a lot like oil. If the oil industry was the largest industry in the world three, four, five years ago, today it's data. So data has surpassed oil as the number one industry in the world. And just like any industry, it has its own supply chain. For example, when you walk into Starbucks and you order your macchiato, there's a farmer that's growing the cocoa bean in Colombia. There's the processor that's taking those cocoa beans and roasting them. There's the wholesaler that's packaging them into these giant boxes and pallets. There's the retailer that's taking that and packaging it into smaller packages, giving it to Starbucks. The barista is taking it, brewing it, and giving your cup of coffee. So that would be the supply chain of coffee. Uh, the same exists now with data. There are companies that only generate data, just like the farmer. So you just generate data about users, about different habits, and you sell it. There's wholesalers that buy and sell large quantities of data. There are data retailers, such as social media sites that allow for companies to advertise using those proprietary data sources. And of course, there's the end user, you and me, which ultimately we're getting the benefit of the products or the services that are being data-driven, that are tailor-made and customized for you, just like your Starbucks macchiato. Well, how much data is really out there? How much data are we actually talking about? Well, in 2020, it's estimated that 59 zettabytes of data was generated in the world. Just to put that into context, one zettabyte is one trillion gigabytes. If one gigabyte is one quarter, so one coin, and we stack those coins all the way up to one zettabyte, that would be approximately 1,300 light years away. So we generated 59 of those in 2020, and it's gonna grow to 175 by 2050. So there's no right or wrong answer. Data is here, it's here to stay, and data-driven decision-making is going to be the future. 20 years from now, any decision that you make is going to have a data source underneath it, proving or disproving the theory or the thesis that you currently have. Trying to sort through all that information, trying to get relevant information or actionable intelligence from all of that that exists is simply not possible by a human or a human brain. We need computers, we need bots. Basically, we need AI to jump in and sort through all this mess and be able to tell us what needs to be done and help us make better decisions. So the second thing I wanted to talk to you is about AI. 20 years from now, AI is gonna be a key part of anything that we do, an integral part, starting from your cappuccino machine at home, to your refrigerator, to teachers, to policemen, to doctors, to businessmen, are all gonna be using some sort of AI to help improve their decision-making and help improve our lives. Uh, AI is a scary thing, I understand. AI, it's gonna take over. It seems like a little bit of a Terminator movie coming to life. Skynet is coming, we must be aware of this, but the reality is a little bit more simpler than that. Uh, AI in itself can be used for good or bad, understandably, based on who is the person that's driving the AI source. But the reality is that when used for good, AI is gonna improve our lives for the better. So AI is a lot like your superhero sidekick. 
they're superhuman. They have abilities that, that we don't. They can learn an incredible amount of knowledge in a very short period of time, which is great. But of course, with that superhuman power comes superhuman responsibility. We have to be aware of how AI is being used. When AI is being used for good, it will make our lives better. It'll help the teacher teach more efficiently. It'll help the policemen do their job better. It'll help the doctor with diagnoses, and it'll help us, our average Joes, in our day-to-day -to, -day, to become the best version of ourselves. What AI is ultimately gonna do is automate the processes, automate the tasks that we do every single day repetitively, and we simply don't want to. There's things that you do every day that you don't need to do, that a computer or a robot can do for you, which will then allow you to spend more time with your family, it will allow you to read more books, it'll allow you to be a better version of yourself. That is the true power of AI. What we currently have in our households is simply not enough to use AI to the best of its ability. We need to have cloud computing, which is the third component of 20 years from now. So what is cloud computing? So cloud computing is, is something that's very difficult to explain to your mom and your dad, I understand. Uh, your mom and your dad are looking for flash drives or disks, and you're like, no, no, the photo's in the cloud, you can just download it, and it's a little bit complicated to, to explain. When it comes to photos and videos, it's becoming easier, we know it, we use it, Netflix is a great example of cloud computing. Streaming services are all based on cloud computing. But the future, your operational systems, your phone, your laptop, they're all gonna be based in the cloud. So you're gonna buy your laptop, you're gonna turn it on, and as long as there's an internet connection, all of the windows, all of the software, calculator, anything that comes with the Windows package is gonna be in the cloud and you're simply gonna access that part of the cloud and start using your computer. The reason why this exists, again, is because having all of that information data, plus all of those AI bots running around, need to have a larger computing base. So I get this question a lot about cloud computing. They say, you know, Armin, what happens if the files that you keep on the cloud get lost or destroyed or something happens to the servers? There's an issue with the servers. Well, I say, listen, if there's an issue with the Google Cloud servers, then there's a much bigger problem in this world than Armin's photos or Armin's, you know, doggy videos. So from that point of view, the cloud is probably the safest bet. So the fourth thing I wanted to talk to you about today is decentralization. So what does this mean? If we have data, AI, and cloud computing as key components of the future, then whoever controls those three controls the world. This is where decentralization comes into play. The key with decentralization is Web 3.0. So what is Web 3.0? So Web 1.0 was basically an online version of magazines or information portals. So it's like reading a book, but on your screen, or reading a magazine, but on your screen. That was Web 1.0. Web 2.0 was interactive. We as users generated content, we wrote comments, we liked, we shared, we got responses from the companies. So Web 2.0 was interactive. Web 3.0 is going to be decentralized. What does this really mean? So with Web 2.0, where we are today, you're a YouTube creator, I'm a YouTube creator, you post something on YouTube and it becomes demonetized because YouTube has a policy against that. You don't have control over the policies, you don't have control over decision-making at YouTube, you're not part of the management team at YouTube, but you are a content creator and you are a content generator. From that perspective, you have no control. With Web 3.0, that control comes down to the user level, to your level, to my level. So not in Web 3.0, not only are you contributing in terms of content, but you're also contributing in terms of decision-making power. You are in control. So in this channel, we're going to be unpacking all of the things that we discussed today. We're going to unpack data in more depth. 
we're going to be talking about different AI and AI assisted tools that currently exist that you could use on a day to day basis to make your life better, to improve productivity. We're going to be talking a lot about cloud computing, how that works, who are the big players, where it's moving towards. And of course, we're going to keep our hand on the pulse of that decentralization and make sure that we don't relinquish control when Web 3.0 comes around. So stay tuned, subscribe, like, and I'll see you soon.